I discovered slow food and started getting into the movement slow food and reading what they were about and about getting back into the heritage sort of side of, of food and not losing all that so not losing all the varieties of fruit and vegetables that we have and how animals are treated you know when the farms and and then what can be done and what difference that makes when you're cooking. So when I came back to Wellington, I was just building towards trying to find all those things that I believed in. I really would like to see us keep as wide a variety of animals and, and fruit and veg as possible. What is happening at the moment is a lot of the breeding of animals and, and growing of food is getting very, very limited because it's what is, grows fast, it produces a lot, it looks great. But I think we're losing a lot of what is really amazing about food and we're losing a lot of the flavors we're losing a lot of the sort of um, great things that as a chef you can do a lot with the other thing i really enjoy personally is just a connection with the people who are growing the fruit and veg or raising the pigs or the beef like it's so nice to be able to talk to a farmer or go to the farm you need to have that connection with what um, you're eating because if you don't have the connection, you lose the respect for it. I started in kitchens when I was 18. My first job was in a cafe. I just worked there to, to make money to, to do the traveling. So from there, I moved to Melbourne and got lucky, got a job in a deli and just started with soups and salads and sandwiches and stuff like that and basic stuff. And from there, I came back to Wellington, got a job with um, a guy called Al Brown. <laughs> just randomly, it was not at Logan Brown, but at a a cafe before he opened up Logan Brown and I worked with him for about nine months and he said to me oh, I'm opening up this restaurant would you like to come and work for me from this this new restaurant not I didn't know what it was going to be or anything I was like oh yeah sounds good and I'm still you know working cafes I've still very much smaller small amount of experience and um, so he took me into Logan Brown and I think that's when my idea of what I was doing with my life changed quite dramatically because it took me into a serious kitchen um, doing amazing food and sort of took me to the next level of, of cooking. And then London, I think, was then another step up. You work crazy. The first job I had was at a, an Italian restaurant and I worked six days and I worked 15 hour days. From there, I went to another really good restaurant called Mew and that was a chef called Tetsuya, who's a, a Japanese Australian chef who's amazing. And I worked there for almost three years. From London, I moved to Sydney, um, helped a friend open a little cafe over there, which was kind of then the instigation to, for opening in Tikoka. And then we decided to move back to New Zealand to settle down and, and have kids. Three years I had back at Logan Brown um, as sous chef and um, was an amazing time, heaps of experience. After three years, it was time for me to move on, but it was quite hard to then decide what to do. And so I left Logan Brown and took six months out just to find a place. And at that same time, my brother Jesse just moved back to Wellington as well. And we were talking over dinner one night and we were like, we should do this together, you know, this is a great opportunity. We went to probably about a dozen different sites in Wellington and finally found what was now Tikoka. We took six weeks to put it all to, together. So with a builder friend, we did everything. We redid the bathrooms and did all the painting and pulled up all the carpets and found out that the floor had some stage had a fire. <laughs> we had to replace all of the flooring and ended up opening Tikoka in 2010.